What's up everybody, Superdukes fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2016 Jaguar F-Type V6. Huge, huge thanks to Kyle for allowing me to borrow his F-Type here, brand new, uh, to review for you guys today. So about the F-Type, well, uh, you know, I still think it's an absolutely beautiful car here in its fourth model year. Um, it still just looks stunning. This, of course, is 2016, the third year here, and it just looks striking, especially in black. They just did such a good job. Ian Callum, uh, who designed this car, just, it's a beautiful blend of elegance and beauty with subtle aggression at the same time that just blends together so well to just make it so striking. Everyone turns and looks at it. Um, it's just a beautiful thing to behold from every single angle, whether it's, you know, the, the curve of the hood to you know the rounded uh, rear quarter panels there and uh, the back end with its uh, very wedge shaped design almost and uh, you know I love all the little throwbacks the e-type and things like that the center exit exhaust and uh, it's just I, I don't know I think you know it's it's aged so well here even you know in the past four years it still looks striking to this day it looks just as good as it did whenever it came out Right, so for the interior of the F-Type, well, much like the exterior, the interior is an awesome blend of cool and classy at the same time, and it just looks fantastic. But anyway, first things first, sitting down in these seats, very nice leather seats. These are the standard uh, sports seats here, and, um, you know, they actually feel really good here with the full leather. And the great thing for 2016 is they upgraded so that it's standard features now to have the uh, adjustable bolsters and the more adjustability to the seat. Um, so you can actually adjust this torso bolster uh, to be as tight or as loose as you want, which which is a really nice feature to have and makes for an ideal seat that you can get into the perfect position and the perfect width and everything for your body type and um, so it's really awesome how you can custom tailor the seat and that's a really great feature to have. The one thing to note about these seats though is that they are kind of on the firm side. That's one thing. It's the first time you sit down on this you'll notice it um, and uh, it's not overly firm. You know it's not like rock hard but uh, you know they're not the most cushy seats, I guess you could say. And so, um, you know, again, not a big deal. This is a sports car, um, but I'd be curious to see how they would feel after, you know, an eight hour road trip or something like that. Next is the steering wheel in the F-Type, which is really great. Now this one is the standard round wheel. You can get one with a flat bottom as an option, but I really love this wheel. It's a, a fairly small wheel. I like the design of it here. You do have a fair assortment of buttons on it, um, but you know, nothing too overwhelming. Uh, and then you have the paddles here in the back that on the standard one uh, aren't painted or anything on the S and the V you get the bronze uh, ones that look a lot cooler um, but yeah I mean just a really great wheel it has a nice nine and three grip that's very comfortable for your thumbs and uh, yeah just nicely leather wrapped and great to use next is the gauges in the f-type which got a slight little font revision here for 2016 in addition to now having a higher resolution center screen and a larger center screen so that's really great because it gives you a, a little more sophistication there and the gauge cluster makes it look a little bit classier and upmarket and looks fantastic and uh, you know you have a few little things to customize there you can uh, see the tire pressure and uh, you know a few things nothing crazy no G meters or anything like that up there here on the base F type but um, still really great gauges and of course the dials are a nice attractive font as well and it's awesome how when you put it into dynamic mode they glow red as well uh, even in the daytime which is a really cool feature and those small little details go a long way I think coming over to the center of the dashboard I first have to say that every single thing in this car is high quality and expensive feeling and that's rare even in you know some of the higher end German stuff there's other little areas that usually get forgotten or you know they cut corners this every single thing you can touch feels nice everything is lined with leather or it's a you know, nice softly padded you know vinyl or whatever it is that's going on you have the metal bits and you know all the knobs and everything feel nice and heavy and substantial everything is just nice to touch and that is uh, really outstanding even 
with higher end stuff, I mean this one as equipped is around $80,000. There's stuff that's double this price that also has a cheap areas where this doesn't. I mean you even have metal bottoms for your cup holders. I mean everything, every square inch of this car feels nice and expensive and that's really appreciated. But as you come over to the center here, it's very nice. Now for 2016 they've also uh, revised the infotainment so that it's a little more advanced here with Jag and Land Rover's new system here. And it's it's really nice. It's again high resolution, uh, a lot uh, more crisp looking and you know sharper. It looks great though and it's easy to use and um, yeah you know it's got the good maps and navigation everything built right into it and uh, you know gets all the basic stuff done. You're not going to really be fiddling with this though because you're just going to want to focus on the driving experience of the F-Type which is so awesome but it's nice to have good infotainment as well. The climate controls and everything like I mentioned all very nice and heavy and expensive feeling. I love also when you turn on the air conditioning here the or the heat the vents that rise up out of the center here that is the coolest thing. No other car even has that. It's just such a cool feature. Um, but anyway, yeah, I love the little digital readouts here within the knobs um, and you know all the switches down here at the bottom feel great as well and they're all very easy to use. And then around the shifter here you obviously of course have the shifter which is nicely metal and leather. Again, no cheap plastic anywhere. It's leather and metal. It's awesome. Um, but you know you have a little dynamic switch here uh, and then you have the all important button in the center console which is the active exhaust button. $1,600 option. The best $1,600 you will ever spend. That should be a standard feature. Um, I can't imagine why there's so many F-types that don't have the active exhaust. That is the must-have option for this car. Um, and I'll explain more about that later. But yeah, so I mean everything is nicely laid out. I do like this divider here for uh, the passenger and driver. It's almost like, you know, this is the driver's zone and the passenger just has a grab handle and that's it. <laughs> it's kind of cool. As far as source base in the F-Type, for a little Roadster, it's actually pretty good. So you have a map pocket here in the door, no bottle hood or anything. But uh, coming over to the center here, you have your two cup holders, which are a perfectly good size and nicely out of the way. You have this nicely padded leather armrest here, and you open that up. And then you have all kinds of hookups in here. you got two USB jacks, a power outlet, an auxiliary jack. And then you also have your CD slot in there as well. So nice to have all that. And it's a fairly deep cubby. You can fit a good amount of things in there as well. It's not a large opening, but it is... Uh, you know good depth so it's very usable and then if you're looking for another storage space uh, there is this other one behind here and uh, you know it has a little net and you have a, another pretty large storage space there to you know fit all the knickknacks you need trunk space in the F-Type. Now that is the only sore spot of this car, honestly, because it's small. Um, at its smallest parts there, uh, you'd be lucky to fit a full-size briefcase in there. Um, but, you know, it does open up a little bit towards the back there. You have a little well area that you can, uh, you know, fit a few small uh, deeper things in there. But still, you know, you're limited to probably a couple of duffel bags, one suitcase uh, that's not too tall, uh, and that's about it. Um, so, you know, this is definitely not the type of car you want to take on a week-long trip with all your luggage, um, but it should be able to, you know, fit, you know, two travel bags, uh, you know, for a weekend trip, something like that. Uh, and of course, if you want more storage space, you can always get the F-Type Coupe, which has the hatch and lots more storage space there. All right, so enough talking. Let's start it up and go for a drive. Jags, of course, all have this very nice key fob. It's a you know keyless entry and push button starts. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it roars to life. All right, so setting off in the 2016 Jagger F. Type V6 automatic. Uh, so, first thing you notice, well, it's a beautiful sunny day, uh, top down cruising. It's just, I love convertibles, so it already has that going for it. Um, other things, though, that you notice right off the bat now, you know, luckily this seat is so adjustable because uh, you do have a very long hood and the dashboard is also very long as well. But whenever you raise the seat up enough, you know, even a guy like myself, five foot nine, you can barely see the hood when you have the seat up high enough and you have a very good view of the road, very good visibility forward. View out of the sides, of course, is great, especially with the top down. And view out of the back is awesome as well, of course, being a convertible. Uh, one thing you do notice, though, even on this smooth park road, is the ride is definitely on the firm side. Firmer than I was expecting for the standard base F-Type. Um, but it does, you know, still feel good enough, and I'll explain more of that, that later. Alrighty, so let's put it into dynamic mode. Put the transmission into sport mode and manual. And let's turn on to this back road here and see how it does. And here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Second gear chirp! Oh, stick takes off! Much faster than 5.1 seconds. It's it really hauls well. 
and I think part of that is because this has the eight-speed quick shift ZF automatic transmission that just, it's like a continual stream of power that doesn't drop off. It's just bam, 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 bam. And uh, there's no relenting with this transmission. And so the upshifts are just so extremely quick. It's wonderful. And those crackles, oh, I love it. I love the F-Type. They were like the first people to do that with an exhaust. And uh, it sounds just as good on the V6s here as it does on the V8s. <laughs> Type R that I reviewed last year, but this is a lot cheaper as well, and it's still tons of fun. Listen to that though, like that is amazing. I don't know why anyone buys an F Type and doesn't do the active exhaust because if you're buying an F Type, you want this sound. If you want something that's silent, go buy a Tesla. If you want an F Type, get the active exhaust, it's the best thing about this car. shifts too. They're just, ah. Everything about this car is just, ah, the sound is 10 out of 10 easily. But let's see how it handles. Coming up to some pretty tight corners here and uh, let's see how this 3,500 pound F-Type does. Okay. <laughs> so there's some weight there. You feel, it feels a little heavy. I will admit that. But it's sharp and it's buttoned down. We got 245 wide in the front, 275 in the rear, and it still gets a little tail happy, even with only 340 horsepower. Oh. <laughs> Trash control would intervene in there because it just wanted to step out completely on me. So good to leave that on, even on the slow F-Type. Uh, it can definitely kick out that back end. So, you know, those who thought the back end shenanigans were only for the F-Type R and rear wheel drive former and used to dance around like crazy, this, it'll certainly do the same. around a lot though in a quarter and honestly it's a little hard to trust right off the bat but listen to that <laughs> and the great thing though about not having a ton and ton of power is that you can really ring out this engine and drive it like you stole it without doing you know triple digits and you know needing to be on an airstrip in order to do a full throttle run you can have fun in this one uh, and go full throttle and not lose your license it moves around a lot more than I was expecting though. It's not exactly buttoned down, but it keeps you on your toes. It's just a different type of fun. If you want something crazy buttoned down, get a Cayman GT4 or a Boxster or something like that. This is a different goal, I think, and this is just wanting to make it playful and make it crazy, and I love that. Because I think a Boxster might be a bore at 35 miles per hour because it's so planted and so capable. Whereas this, the limits seem a little lower and it's a little more shifty, but that's okay because it means that you can still have fun at 40 miles an hour. Oh. Yeah, this thing, it keeps you on your toes. <laughs> you can't relax while driving this if you want to go fast. If you want to go fast, you're going to be on your toes and I love that. One other random thing I want to mention is that um, the size of this car, now with this large hood, and everything, it does feel a little bit wider. Now, it's not overwhelming for me because I'm used to driving a you know, 2016 Mustang and those are enormous as well. Um, but for those that were you know, coming out of something smaller, um, you know, this may you know, be a little bit of an adjustment. I know when I used to have my BRZ, I actually test drove, test drove one of these a long time ago and um, I, it felt really big back when I was getting out of my BRZ into this. But if you're used to larger cars like the Mustang or something like that, then you'll feel right at home in this. Definitely some weight to it. There's some heft, and it likes to dance around. But I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. Sure, it could stand to lose, you know, 100 pounds or so, or 200 maybe. Um, unfortunately, the heft types just get heavier and heavier. Now, you know, the R is only available with all-wheel drive, so those are like 300 pounds heavier than this one is. And you know, the V8, of course, adds weight. This is the leanest one of them all, and um, it's fantastic, honestly. Though, I mean. of a car. The base F-Type is far from base in any way, shape, or form. This thing is a riot of the first degree. It is fun. I am just thoroughly 
surprised that 275 wide tires are coming unstuck that easily in a car with 340 horsepower. Uh, pretty surprising. I mean, I think part of that is because, you know, it's supercharged, so the, all that power is available right off the bat, essentially. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> more of a handful than I was expecting for the slow F-Type. Uh, this is fantastic fun. But anyway, um, I have this car for the entire day thanks to the very kind owner. Um, so I'm going to drive around the rest of the day here, and I'll come back and give you some updated impressions. All right, so I've been driving the F-Type here all day, and as you can expect, I absolutely adore it. It's sublime. It's just everything that I would want in a convertible uh, and everything I think a lot of enthusiasts will want a convertible. You have rear-wheel drive, you have tail happiness, you have amazing sound, you have a really well done convertible too by the way. Uh, I love how early this part stops so that you get a really good open air experience as you can probably tell by my uh, messed up hair and um, it's just it's just so well done and I mean yes it does have some weight to it it does feel heavy um, in in the context of roadsters and whatnot I mean this feels light compared to my Mustang but uh, you know heavy compared to other roadsters but that's okay because everything just still works really well so handles very well um, you know and if you want more grip you can easily fix that with just stickier tires that uh, can easily solve that and give you a lot more grip because um, everything else is just really, really well done. I mean, I think they switched to an electric assisted rack here for the, the 16s versus the hydraulic one of the old ones. Um, but honestly, I think the steering feels great. It has a great feel to it as far as the weight goes. Um, and I mean, you don't feel a ton through the steering wheel, but it's accurate and precise and works well. And I haven't had any annoyances with it while I've been driving here. Other things. Um, throttle response is really well done too. Not ultra sharp, but it's just right. It's the Goldilocks of setups, honestly. It's not overly sharp, not too dull, just right. Um, same goes for the brake pedal. Now, the brakes are a little touchy, but once you get used to them, they are perfect because it means the car feels so eager to stop and it'll give you that full bite really early on, which is uh, really nice to have. Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> As you hear that, it just it just cracks you up every time. I mean, it's just that's the great thing about this car is even when you're stuck behind traffic annoyingly like I am currently, you can still have fun with the exhaust. And like I said, because of this one's lower handling limits, you can still feel like you're involved in the driving experience even whenever you're you know stuck behind traffic and stuff. It's still fun. You don't have you know miles and miles of grip, and so. Um, you know, it's a little more involving, and um, so I would consider this the Miata of the F-Types, you know, it's, uh, but it's, it's plenty quick though, I gotta say, there hasn't been a single time where I've been like, man, I wish I had more power, not once. Now, this suspension setup, I mentioned earlier that it, it felt a little bit firm when I was first getting started, and it still does have a little bit of a firmness to it, but then again, this is a sports car after all, and, um, you know, it's definitely on the sportier side, I mean, this is a little stiff for, um, ultra luxury grand tour but i don't think that's really this car's mission um it still is supposed to be a sports car and compete against the 911 and stuff like that and i think it has a ride very similar to those cars and uh you know it's not overly harsh but it's not buttery smooth either another thing i want to talk a little bit more about is this transmission which is really great i love uh even when you leave an automatic mode the way that it holds gears here in the sport mode and then it also is very quiet and docile and smooth whenever you're in the normal drive mode and the upshifts are great too. Every time you upshift, it gives you a little bit of a bump almost. It's, it's, it's a little bit of a firm shift and I love that about it because it's actually a little bit sportier feeling. It's not buttery smooth with the upshifts, but it feels fantastic because every time you upshift, it's bang, 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 and it feels awesome. Um, and so actually, we're coming up to a little tunnel here, so take a little break from talking. of F-Type. <laughs> anyway, uh, getting back to the transmission here. Uh, the only downside with this transmission is the downshifts. Now, it gives them to you, but it's a little bit delayed. Like, upshifts are bam, 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 but downshift, a little more like a standard automatic. Um, 
So that's the only nitpicky thing I can say about this transmission. Now, thankfully for 2016, a manual is an option uh, here only on the V6 versions and the you know the V6s. Uh, so that may be the transmission to get if the lag and the downshifts annoy you. But honestly, the transmission is so well done that doesn't really bother me. Um, it's still quick enough, and the upshifts are what you really care about you know, the most, I think. So totally okay, but uh, just worth noting. One last thing I want to mention as well is you know now that I have been driving this car all day. You know, I mentioned how these seats are a little bit firm, and they still are firm, but they haven't bothered me, they haven't hurt my back or, you know, made me numb or anything like that. And so, yeah, I don't have any problems with these seats. I think they're totally fine. Uh, even, you know, I've been driving all day and uh, no complaints with them. So, uh, yeah, overall, just such a well done car and uh, I absolutely love everything about it. So huge thanks to Kyle. He lent me this car for a full 24 hours and it's been a blast. And uh, so huge thanks to him for being so generous and letting me borrow this car. And uh, so let me know your thoughts on the F-Type and thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.